What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. My name is Fedi and I'm a fifth year medical student at St. Petersburg State Pediatric Medical University and today we're going to talk about the cure for vitiligo. But before doing that I want you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the latest breakthroughs in medicine I post here uh, regularly. It's no secret that vitiligo is one of the most psychologically challenging diseases of the humankind. And unfortunately for so long we didn't have any fully efficient ways to sort of combat it. Until last week when the FDA approved a drug called Ruxolitinib for the treatment of non-segmental vitiligo. And I'm not going to re-explain the mechanism of action of ruxolitinib as it's just like baricitinib, it's a JAK inhibitor, a selective JAK1 and 2 inhibitor. And I already talked about those on my previous video about the treatment of alopecia areata with JAK inhibitors. So you can go ahead and watch that as well. But I want you to focus on the word non-segmental because there's actually two theories behind the pathogenesis of vitiligo. The first theory is also called the autoimmune theory. Basically what happens is we have these cells and our body is called melanocytes. And melanocytes are cells that are responsible for the production of a pigment called melanin. Uh, melanin is basically responsible for giving our skin its color. Obviously, dark-skinned people have more melanin, light-skinned people have less. And what happens in the non-segmental variant of this disease is that the autoimmune cells, the T lymphocytes, go ahead and attack melanocytes and destroy them. So melanocytes are no longer able to produce melanin and the skin loses its color. So it can only make sense to give these patients a JAK inhibitor, which is basically a suppressor of the immune response. The second theory is called the neurotoxic theory and it's responsible for giving us the segmental variant of this disease. Actually, we believe that some neurons secrete a poisonous chemical that attacks and destroys melanocytes. As a result, the macules or the depigmented patches of the skin will follow the same pattern of the neurons in the skin called dermatomes, making them usually unilateral as opposed to being bilateral in non-segmental vitiligo. So obviously it wouldn't make sense to treat these patients with a JAK inhibitor because the immune cells have nothing to do with the segmental variant of vitiligo. And you could easily differentiate which type of vitiligo you have by simply looking at the depigmented patches uh, and its territories on your skin. So now that you have determined that you have the right type of vitiligo, the next step is to know whether you qualify to be treated with this drug. And the way we can do that is by looking to the inclusion criteria that the authors used in the clinical trials for ruxolitinib. And as we can see here, 677 participants uh, enrolled in this study. Um, the patients had vitiligo that affected a body surface area between 3 and 10% with an f vasi score superior to 0.5%. And f vasi is an abbreviation for Facial Vitiligo Assessment Score Index. And what that phrase actually means is the patients that enrolled in this study have 0.5% or more of their body surface area affected with vitiligo on their face. So the 677 participants applied ruxolitinib as a 1.5% cream for the duration of 52 weeks and the results are as follow. By week 24 of applying ruxolitinib cream on the depigmented area of the skin, 30% of the participants achieved 75% improvement in their facial vitiligo. And by week 52, that number increased to 50% of participants. 
also a very interesting number. By week 52, nearly 30% of patients observed a whopping 90% improvement in their facial vitiligo. And that's like close to no vitiligo left at all. And the reason I'm only citing the facial vitiligo numbers from the study is that, you know, vitiligo can affect every uh, territory of the skin but it's, it's especially the facial vitiligo that sort of gives the patients the most psychological challenges. And as we said before, if you would have vitiligo on your hand, for example, you could treat it off label with corticosteroids injections, but in no way you could do that if the depigmented skin is in your face. But raxilitinib is a cream, so it could be easily and safely applied on the face. But, as we always say, with new power comes some responsibility. And so is this new drug, Roxilirinib. So, what are the side effects? The side effects were pretty mild. Uh, one of the most common side effects was um, itching and redness uh, and some acne on the applying side of the cream. Uh, but some systemic absorption was also observed of the drug and uh, side effects like fever, headache, um, common cold, some urinary tract infections as well um, and fever were uh, observed. So um, you should take care of yourself uh, if you're planning to take this drug. because after all, it's a JAK inhibitor, meaning it reduces the full capacity of your immune system. And there you go, guys. If you made it this far into the video, please make sure to subscribe and like the video, and maybe suggest in the comments some future topics you want me to talk about. As always, stay safe.